it was, it's amazing when you're going through something how immediately if you'll lean in and submit to the Lord, how you'll, you'll enjoy it. You'll enjoy the changes. You'll enjoy what you're going through. It doesn't matter how bad it is. You'll start finding some sort of fruit. Joy is not happiness. I'm about to show you this. Joy is not happiness. Joy is a fruit that you're going to have to express correctly so people can eat of it. Matter of fact, what marked the early church that we were praying for uh, earlier in the meeting was, we prayed most of this message, was they had joy. They were filled with joy. Everybody knew they were filled with joy. Stephen had the presence of God. See, that's what changed Paul. He saw, he stones, they had, he had Stephen's stoned, and here comes this glory realm around him. And he was filled with joy. That Paul couldn't get away from that. See, you, you've got to understand that God is using you some way in the midst of this crazy change in the world that we're going through. Now, there are harvest moments ahead for you. Do not just go to the grocery store, go to the grocery store and say, Lord, now there's a harvest moment here, show it to me. <laughs> be surprised what's going to happen. You'll be surprised who he sends to you. You'll be surprised what goes on. This is how people are going to start getting saved and this big move of God's going to come. It's not going to come just because we are here in the church because people have bad opinions about the church. Therefore, you're going to have to say, we're about to have church here in the grocery store. You're going to have to say at Walmart, we're about to have church. And all of a sudden, the Spirit of God's going to flood in there and start doing something that is just going to blow people away. It's amazing what he can do. I saw this one guy, he was scrimping every penny. He had two bags of diapers, all this formula, and he was in front of me and I said, let me pay for all that. He said, why? I said, because we once had five kids, 10 and below. I, I know what you're going through. That guy started, broke down and started weeping and weeping. And I said, the Lord pulled us through it. You're going to live through these children. That's what I said to him. You're going to live through these children. Now tell somebody, you're going to live through that child that's running you crazy. That guy was weeping. Then all of a sudden, the, the, the person at the cash register was weeping. I mean, it became church right there. The manager came over, wanted to know what was wrong. I said, I paid for the man's diapers, and I, he, didn't ha he was having to scrimp. Now they can go eat. You ha I'm fine. I'm thinking, I'm telling you, don't look at the spiritual atmosphere that the enemy has tried to create to wear you out. You need to walk out in that atmosphere and say, wait a minute, one of us is going. And greater is he who's in me than he who's in the world. I'm not going to get on the plane and complain about how awful it is now. I'm in first place and they give me a water bottle and a bag of peanuts just like everybody else. I'm in first class for the rest of my life. I've got so many miles. I'm not going to say, well, they ought to be doing something for first class. I'm going to say, thank you for these peanuts and water. And the Lord's sending me to Vegas. And what, I, did, I said that to one of the flight attendants. She said, everybody says that gets on the plane to Vegas. 
I said, but the Lord is really sending me to Vegas. <laughs> so we started laughing. We had a good time. And, and then she realized, I get, I, she realized who I was once I pulled my mask down. Now, here's, here's what I'm trying to say to you. Get a grip. Look at somebody and say, get a grip. Have you ever had anybody tell you, get a grip? Well, what they're saying is you're losing, you're losing touch with some sort of reality here. Your emotions are taking you over the edge. You're not thinking right. Get a grip. See, we got, we've got to see that we're in an atmosphere that we could lose grip. But you know what God's saying to you this year as you go into the year ahead? Get a grip. Take a, get a stand. See, it's real simple. I, I could be really theological with this, but God's saying to you, get a grip. Now, let me show you what's going to happen. See, you're going to have to find your Shabbat some way. Shabbat causes you to be healed. A lot of times you're sick because you don't, obey some sort of Shabbat in your life. Now, I'm not one of those, well, look at me, I mean, I'm not one of those that has rules and regulation and all that, but I've got to find a Shabbat each week. You know why? Because God found a Shabbat each week. It's really that simple. You're going to have to determine, and here was my prayer. I would come to Vegas every year. This is 20 years. Every year come here, and I would say, Vegas, it's not the gambling that's the problem. They never have a Shabbat. I would say that every year. They don't have a Shabbat. God shut it down. He said, well, we're going to make up for those Shabbats you hadn't been having. See, you've got to look at things when God's doing something, and you've got to realize He's doing it. And so you've got to find that because Isaiah 58 says it's going to make you, your health spring forth speedily. All right? You're going to have to know that revelation, this portal you're keeping open, revelation uncovers. But revelation is not the same as wisdom. You have to have revelation, and once you're uncovering what you need to uncover, you develop wisdom. Wisdom dismantles demons. All of a sudden, that moment in Holy Spirit where you have been revealed to your future, all of a sudden, you see. Something's uncovered, but you're going to have to develop the wisdom on how to walk in it. Now, that's real key for us. And so, it's not about wisdom this year, so to speak. It's really about keeping your revelation portal open so all of a sudden you can walk into the place and that thing you've been dealing with so long, it's uncovered like that. All of a sudden, you're going to have a light bulb go on and say, this is why I'm poor. See, you're going to have all of a sudden a thought and capture that thought. That's what Paul says. So you can come into that place in the future you need to be. 